All right, working on the Armor Race 2 again. So, had a problem with the air suspension. I could hear the compressor constantly running. And I knew that the compressor is the most expensive part to this air suspension system. So you got the airbags, one here, and you got another one over there. And right here you got two compressors, some cylinder valves, a valve block, and your control module for your air ride suspension. What you're seeing now is a finished product. Everything's working. Right here are your ride height sensors. I end up replacing the airbags. So those are new airbags. I replaced those first because I thought that, that was the problem. Which I should not have done. I should have tested them. I should have just replaced them, but they were cheap, so I just went ahead and replaced them. After doing that, I still had a problem with the compressor right here constantly running. You don't want that compressor constantly running because they're overheat. Those are original compressors that come on here. And so. What I did was, I'll show you that it's working. This is your ride height. So if you want to go over rocks and stuff, you press that. Get your light right here, it comes on. When you close the door, the truck should raise up. I see it raising up easier if I show you the lines. You can see the rear of the truck is raised. So measurements to take notes of on a good system. And I did this before I started working on it. From the top of the tire to the bottom, you got 30 centimeters. Double check the other side, top of the tire, to the fender, 30 centimeters. So I'm dropping back down. See, I'm back at my lines, and I had marked up there for reference. 
good measurement. Here, top of the tire. See there is about 24. So I'm 20, 23, 24. Check this side. Top of the tire, 23, 24. So that's how it should work. While I was working on putting my little system together, I used this right here. So I had this gauge, air inlet here, and I had this right here which is a pneumatic quick connect fitting. I ran the airbags. So coming out the top of the airbag, you got a hose. You got a pneumatic hose coming out the top of the airbag. See, this is coming from the airbag here. Ran this into here. Same thing from the other airbag. Ran the line from the top of the airbag to here. Those lines would have went to here. So you take the two lines out of here and I put them in here. What that allowed me to do is, that allowed me to um, run basically my air compressor. So I got my air compressor here. That basically allowed me to connect here and then open this valve and raise the truck up and set the height at what I knew it was supposed to be, which was 23, 24. So I did that while I was in the process of working on getting my solenoid valves hooked up the reason i have this here is that way if for instance if i came back here and saw that my white lines right there were way low i could go to any gas station or whatever and also put it put air in there you know, gas station won't have this, so that's why I put that there. So that that was just my temporary fix. When what I ended up finding out the problem was was this here. So as you can see, this is cracked both sides, but this one here was worse. You can see that bolt right there is broken off in there. My system was leaking around here. So that's why I had this off because I tried to fix it first, put new O-rings on it. And I tried to super glue it, but of course that wasn't working. So what I ended up doing is, you see I put these are new fins here. I tried to put new fins here because I took the old fins out, cleaned them out, everything try to put new fins that didn't work so like I said there's a sensor here looking at it I didn't think it was threaded but I just said well, you know really I can't do anything with this part so I went ahead and put it on vice and unthreaded this sensor so that sensor is what I'm using now all right so I dropped I dropped the compression and the valve assembly that I've made so you can get a better view let's see if I can block some of this light off all right there we go so basically what you have is this is where your old valve assembly was hooked to these wires here hook to your valve assembly. What I did was cut the wires, spliced them into my solenoids. As you can see there. 
Same thing on this solenoid here. And then, so to replace the valve assembly, I have this piece. You're going to have to source this. You can make this from pretty much anything. Get a aluminum block, drill a hole straight through it, tap it, and put additional taps wherever you need it. I just have this one because it has so many different tap points. So as you can see, this here goes to the dryer. Goes back out, goes there. So that's providing air to this assembly. Coming out of here. I have that tap going to this coupling, which goes to this sensor. That way I can read the pressure on the dryer. And when the solenoids are open, you're reading pressure on both solenoids. Then I'm coming off of the block here, going to the solenoid. From the solenoid, this line here goes all the way back to your airbag. Same thing here. On the other side, it's coming off the block, going to the solenoid. That goes up and over to the other airbag. One thing you have to do with these solenoids is the way you hook them up, they have direction arrows. As you can see, the arrow, I got it going away. From the airbag so your airbag line is here going away from the airbag back to the dryer same thing on this side airbag is on this side as you can see you got the arrow going away it won't work if you do it the other way what happened is your airbags as soon as it turns off, they're going to float down because there's a check valve in here. So it allows air in when it's off, but it won't allow air out when it's off. And when this is off, you don't want air out because that means your airbags will go down. And when it's on, you want air in because you're bringing air from the dryer into the bag. So that's how I got that. And I'm going to show you why you have to have this arrow pointed away from the airbags. As you can see, I have nothing connected to it. This is completely disconnected from any power, anything. The only thing that's connected to it is that holds to the airbag. When I release this, it's going to release the airbag. That is exactly why you have to have that solenoid pointing in that direction. And your old valve assembly looks something like this. It's not going to look like those. Those are connectors that I've added. But it will have that connector on it. So this sensor was actually screwed in here. As you can see that's threaded. So that's your old valve assembly. Mine was actually leaking from here. See the bolt, all that was broken off. So that's why I replaced it. You can see the connection here. This connection is that connection. So I cut those off. 
wired it into my two solenoids here. And so, from the sensor, run it to the valve block. From the valve block, you'll see this is different because I just added this because I'm running this additional line here to my train horn now. Let me disconnect that. I'll leave it there. You can figure it out. If you're not running the train horn, you don't need this. And you need to block that off. So this is all you need. This going to this, which just sends air out to both both cylinders. This here is going to go right here, which just goes around to your receiver dryer. And as you can see from the cylinder, it goes out. To the top of the airbag so that's just how that works and like I say yeah cylinder has to be pointing away from the airbag make sure you like share comment subscribe let me know anything else on the H2 want to work on